How do you find these epic trails? How do you plan your routes? How do you find those amazing secluded camping locations? And how do you get free off-grid GPS without having to pay a monthly fee? Stay tuned because in this video we're going to answer all those questions and we're also going to show you the best overlanding navigation setup. the next chapter by simplifying our lives, exploring our dreams, and connecting with what truly matters. First we're going to explain how we use our navigation software, which is the Gaia GPS app. And we have this just loaded on an old iPad that we had around the house. And note that we're using the iOS or Apple operating system for this tutorial. So if you're using Android or something else, it's going to be a little bit different, but it's really similar and you should be able to figure it out. Stay tuned to the end of this video because we're going to show you how we get off-grid GPS connection without having to pay a monthly service fee. Gaia GPS is an app that you can download from your app store or whatever you use. So there's three levels. There's free, membership, and premium. And we would suggest to get the premium for the $37 a year because it's really worth it for all the awesome extras and the features that you get. Yeah, with the premium version, you get something like 404 maps and layers included. And we're actually going to put a link down below if you use it. This doesn't go to us, but this is going to help out our friends over at Lifestyle Overland and you'll get a discount off the Gaia GPS uh, subscription so you can check out the link down below to get that. So the first thing you'll notice at the top of the screen is you have all this different um, data on there. You got distance, ascent, pace, average speed, moving time, current speed, altitude, all these different things on there. So that's going to give you um, a lot of good data up there. There's also a compass in the middle there that says, you know, we're, we're kind of at, I think it says 24 degrees and we're heading west right now. You can use those if you want. Um, I tend to not rely on it. I don't use it a whole lot, but sometimes if you want to know which direction you're going, that can be really helpful. So you can see here we got a sidebar up and this is typically if you're doing some options or adjusting things on the map, you want the sidebar up. But most of the time when you're driving around, you just want to see the map view. So then you just hit the full screen button and then that gives you the large map view where you can just see what's going on. So if you long press or press and hold the full screen button, this is gonna bring up where you can kind of customize your screen display however you want it. Um, that's the basic layout of the map. You know, you can put things on left sidebar if you want. Uh, show the status bar, show the compass, don't show the compass. Map rotation is one that we kind of, uh, we leave it off because when you're bouncing around in the overlanding vehicle, you don't want your map going from, you know, one orientation to another. So we just kind of leave it uh, that on and that seems to be the best thing for us. So now let's explain some of the map layers, which is where the Gaia maps really shine. So up at the top of the screen, the layers button, which basically looks like three sheets of paper on top of each other. You wanna tap the layers button. And what you're gonna see here, then I want you to select edit. So you'll note here, and I wanna remind you guys, you wanna do these settings when you're at home on Wi-Fi before you get out and uh, go to an off-grid situation. So some of these options won't be available. So you wanna make sure you do this uh, when you have Wi-Fi. Set this up at home before you go out. So when you tap the layers button and then select edit, this is gonna give you access to all the map layers and adding them based on your preferences. So first you can see that you have options from different regions of the world, plus topographic maps, road maps, satellite imagery, historic maps, premium options, and custom layers. And all this is focusing mainly on North America and US maps. You can also go to the Gaia website and they have maps from all over the world. So you can get maps for uh, Africa, New Zealand, and Australia. Canada has some really good maps as well. They do have map options for all over the, all over the uh, world, depending on what region or place you're in. So note that they do have that. But I'll add that for our friends over in Australia and New Zealand, um, Gaia is not as advanced as the HEMA maps that you have over there, but they are getting better every single day. Um, so you, this is an option for your, our friends over in Australia and New Zealand. So under the North American tab, so we really use the Gaia topographic maps as kind of our default. The, the Gaia topographic maps are really, really great. Um, and I think they've got really great detail and they're very accurate. And especially they come at a small size, which is really great. 
Um, other than that, under North America, we really like the U.S. topographic maps. We also use the USFS 2016 option. Um, these are some of our favorite layers that we use. Um, and again, it really comes down to what are you doing, what, are you, you know, uh, what, what area are you in, and what are you most comfortable using. So then, next you can go back out, and then you want to add road maps. So you can see under the road maps tab, you can add in the roadmaps you want here. Um, there's some preloaded roadmaps they have on here. There's also a Google hack, which I'm not going to get into on this video, but you can. there's a hack where you can actually put Google Maps on here under your custom map options. I would suggest you search the internet on how to do that, and you can get actually Google Maps set up on here as well. So when you're traveling around, uh, not on trails, off on the hardball or in cities, you can have access to Google Maps as well. So if you go back out, you can also see that you can add satellite imagery. And you really pick the satellite imagery you want. We tend to go with just the satellite with labels, um, but you can really pick whatever type of satellite imagery you want on here. And that's always great because um, even though the maps are pretty good and accurate, I don't know about you, but sometimes we really like to be able to see you know, the actual satellite imagery, some of the details or the uh, maybe where we're at on the map, if there's something nearby. I think the satellite imagery really gives you an advantage in that aspect. Now under premium maps and base maps, you can see that there are a number of amazing hiking trail maps here, such as the Appalachian Trail, John Muir, and PCT. We are going to add the Nat Geo Trails Illustrated. Then we head back to Premium Overlays and add the Public Lands Overlay and the MVUM USFS Overlay. These are essential for making sure that you are using legal roads and for finding those epic free camping areas we talked about in one of our other videos. There's also cell coverage overlays based on your cell carrier and weather forecast overlays that can show you any climate weather coming in for the next 24, 48, or 72 hours. You can also add layers such as wildfires, Native American lands, and even hunting lands based on what type of hunting you're doing. Under nautical and aviation, you also have some drone maps for drone users to see areas that flying your drone may or may not be permitted. Now back at the map sources screen, you can simply press the green arrow on the overlay when you want to see that overlay on your maps. If you want, you press and hold a layer to move it to the base map position to have that layer always a default. So now that you have your map set up, you can add a waypoint like a campsite or a favorite spot by simply pushing the plus button at the top and then selecting Add a Waypoint. Once you hit Add a Waypoint, the waypoint will show up on the map, and you can press and hold and then move the waypoint to the exact location where you want it. Once you get the waypoint to where you want it, you can hit Save and give it a name. To make a route, you simply press the screen and hold at a starting point like on a road or a trail. Next, press and hold and drop other waypoints along the route you plan to travel. Now as you can see on the map, this is more of a straight line distance or as the crow flies, but if you look down at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a little crow next to a mode button. When you push on the crow, it'll bring up menu options to choose from like hiking, cycling, or driving, depending on what you're doing. 
So for overlanding, we would hit driving. Once you select this option, the route will snap to the trail you are trying to use, but we've noticed that this feature sometimes is hit and miss based on the connections or the version of the iOS you're using, and also the type of overlays you're doing. So some of this doesn't work on certain overlays. Once you've plotted your route, you hit the save, And here you also have options to save this route while also downloading this route to an offline map layer, which comes in really useful. Plus, Gaia gives you the ability to save the route based on how much detail you want and the different types of maps that you have in your layer setting and based on the size it'll take up on your device. You can select low, medium, or high. We usually use medium. Then you can select the layers that you might want to use for navigating this route. You can turn the layers on and off with the toggle buttons. If you note at the bottom of this box, you can see the file size at the bottom of the screen. So there are tons of options with this Gaia Navigation GPS system. We've been using this for three years now and we haven't been disappointed. The biggest thing to remember is to set this up before you head out and then make sure you've got your maps downloaded offline just in case you find yourself in that situation where you may need a map and you don't have it. The best thing that we've done is downloaded maps for the entire area we might be in for an adventure or an expedition. That way we have those maps readily available whenever we need them. Now, as promised, we wanna show you how we get offline GPS for free. So we are really excited about Tesla's Starlink program that's coming out and we're really hoping that they start rolling that out a lot quicker. If you don't know what the Tesla Starlink program is, it's basically Tesla has uh, some low orbit satellites that's gonna be able to provide Wi-Fi internet anywhere in the world if you have the access to that systems. And some of their testing has uh, already shown to be at about 50 to 150 megabits per second for download and upload speeds, which is pretty impressive. So once that rolls out, I mean, we're gonna be able to have Wi-Fi anywhere in the world, wherever you're at, uh, as long as you can get a satellite signal, which is pretty exciting. But in the meantime, we're gonna show you a, this quick hack on how you can get GPS satellite until we get that technology. Anyways, to get accurate offline GPS tracking, we use this dual electronics GPS puck that we got from Amazon, and we'll leave a link in the descriptions below. This provides offline GPS connection, and it charges via USB port. This device connects to our iPad via Bluetooth, and that gives us real-time GPS tracking with no monthly fee. Now, with some of the paid services like the Garmin InReach, you get the added bonuses of being able to do like SOS or sending text messages, which is really nice. But those options do come at you know a premium because you're paying a monthly fee for that service. But for the free option, we've been extremely happy with this dual electronic GPS puck. So if you have any tips or hacks or suggestions, please leave them in the comments down below. Because honestly, you guys provide some of the best resources and the best insights and knowledge when it comes to this stuff. And, you know, we can only do so much on these videos, but we really appreciate it when you guys provide your expert advice and insights. Some of you guys have been out on the trails and you've had to just, you know, come up with some MacGyverisms and, and figuring things out. And we really appreciate that. So leave those comments down below. That way everybody can learn together. And stay crazy, guys.